welcome back to my channel. <laughs> oh, hey guys, what's up? My name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having an awesome day. And yes, today's video is going to be finally the Lunar Beauty Review. This is going to be my first impressions of the palette created by Manny MUA, who owns Lunar Beauty. This is their first ever product, and if you don't know, which you obviously do because the whole world does, that Manny MUA is a influencer here on YouTube and also has a popping Instagram as well. So today we're going to try out this palette. I am going to go ahead and disclose that I usually do not watch reviews or anything using products before I use it myself, but because there was a lot of PR sent out and I did take me a while to get this. I have watched Manny's videos on this as well as some of Raw Beauty Christie's video on it. So I'm just disclaiming that right off the bat that I have seen a little bit about this product. Now I've heard good good things from influencers about this product but they received the PR and I've heard like some iffy things about it from you guys like normal people. So I am gonna find out for myself. I purchased this myself and we're going to find out if it's good or not. Now, I've seen a lot of controversy of, like, this is like other palettes, and is it good? Is it blah, blah, blah? So we're going to find out. Without any further ado, let's jump into the video. Alright, guys, before we get started, I put a video every single freaking day, literally every day, so you always still need to watch. If you want to subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, let's get started. I'm excited. I really just wanted to try this out for a really long time since the reveal because it's like one of those things like is this celebrity brand going to be good or not because there's so many that are and there's so many that aren't. We've had a lot of things kind of iffy lately and with so many products coming out this month I wanted to know is this going to be one of the good ones. So this is the palette's carton itself. We'll do a full unboxing in a second, but this palette is $45 on LunarBeauty.com. It is vegan and cruelty-free. Fair warning though, there may be a little bit of staining on the eyes with some of the red pigments in here. But personally, I don't mind that. I also find things that say they stain your eyes. If you use my cellar water, you can kind of take it off. So just want to disclose that before we get started. Let's go to the tutorial. All right, I know there's some of you who are watching this video who are not subscribed to my channel. But, just as a little incentive, I did buy a second palette that I will be giving away later on this week. So if you want to subscribe, you would be up to date so you can win this. Whether you wanted it yourself, you couldn't afford it, or you just don't want to invest the money in it, I have an option for you so you have a chance to win later on. Oh my gosh. I just got it. Like, I've been waiting all day to do my face so that I can have fresh makeup for when I unbox this thing. So here is our little box it comes in. It says Lunar Beauty and has a postcard up the top, which has one of my favorite drag queens of all time, Farrah Moan on it. I love you, Farrah. And let's open this up. All right, so here is the palette itself. It very much reminds me of how Jeffree Star wraps his stuff like bubble wrap, customized paper, and a customized sticker. So it has like the B for beauty up here. Well, I guess it says LB technically, it's their logo. So let's open it up. Hi, Azri. I didn't really want to rip the paper, but this is a really strong sticker. Ooh, and here is the palette. Ooh, I really like the pink and gold. I know it's kind of hard to see because my lights are going to reflect everything, but it's so pretty. And I like the little crown on drag. I think it's cute. And the back just has a couple things of information, like that it's cruelty free. And it has a Manny signature on the back, which is really pretty. This is a really pretty box and probably gonna be one of those boxes that I hoard forever. <laughs> so let's open it up. I am so excited to finally have this. Okay. Wow. 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 This is thick. This is a thick palette. Like, I, I expected it to be thinner than this. I don't know why. It's just really thick. Like, it's, it's a hefty palette. Oh, well, let's talk about the cover for a second. It's like got the hollow over it. I really like the eyes. I think it's pretty. It looks really well done. And this is the back has like the pretty uh, hollow on it. I really like the cover. I wish it was a little bit brighter. It's a little bit dark, but it's gorgeous. <laughs> and this is the inside of the palette. I know you guys have seen it a million times and you're just like, well, just use it already. But this is me seeing it for the first time in person, so sorry. And the brush actually looks very nice that comes in here, so I'm a little bit impressed by that. If he had put a sponge tip brush in here, I would not have respected this palette. <laughs> All 
All right, so let's go ahead and get doing, uh, get started doing some makeup with it because you guys know I love yellow eyeshadow, and that's exactly what made me buy this palette is that yellow eyeshadow. I'm going to go ahead and prime my lids using the NYX eyeshadow base in white and put it all over my lids so we have a nice little base going so we can pick out some colors. Okay, so before this creases up on me, I'm going to take this matte white of Cake Face and set the lid. Now you guys know I need a light base that's a matte in every palette that I use, and this one has a white, so that definitely works for me. It's like one of the staple things I always say I need in a palette is a light base. Um, so that is approved so far. And it looks good, like, setting it, it's white. I'm not going to really be able to judge the formulation while I'm just setting a base down, but like, looks good. Alright, so this is the brush that it comes with, um, looks good, looks fine. For being a free brush, you know, I'll take it. It looks fine. I'm going to be using this today, so we'll see if it's any good. Um, the lid is set now. The color of Cake Face did a pretty good job of setting it, and it looks very bright and white. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do for the top of the lid. So I think what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna take the color of Sickening, which is this color right here. Um, I will be doing some swatches in a second too, so don't worry about it after the tutorial. But I'm gonna take the color of Sickening and I'm gonna put it over my crease area. I'm gonna go ahead and take this brush that came with it and use it to do that. So right off the bat, I tapped into Sickening. There's a little bit of kickback, but it's not bad. And there's a lot of pigment on the brush. So make, a, make sure you tap off the excess. And let's try to blend this up here. Okay, so I put my little bit of a base down using the color of a sickening. And I just, I'm not used to that brush, so I'm not really like a super big fan of it. But it's not like a bad brush by any means. I just wanted to say that it like, it made my job a little bit harder, I think. So I'm going to take the color of Hunty Nail, which is this matte color right here. On a Real Techniques brush. This one had a lot more fallout with it. But, you know, I'm not the biggest complainer of fallout. Usually because if anything pops up on the pan for the first eye, I kind of just pick it back up to use for the second eye. I'm going to put this in the inner crease area because it's not very dark, but I do want to kind of build up the crease color. Alright, the next color I'm going to take is Mug very lightly and I'm just going to darken up the outer corner. And I might dip into a little bit of trait, so I'm going to mix these two very lightly. Okay, so I'm really a big fan of this color Trade, which I mixed in with Mug. I just really like that it's a brown with like a little bit of a bricky kind of red hue to it. I really enjoyed that for, you know, personal preference. And it blended out very nicely. So next, I'm going to take the color of Beat um, on a flat brush and pack it onto the inner corner of the eye. We're going to see if it works dry and then we'll move on to see if it, we need to be wetted or not. We'll see. So I'm going to take a flat Palladio brush, dry into the color of Beat. It appears to have picked up a lot. And let's just see. I don't think we need to wet it. I kind of want to just because it's what I do. It's picking it up, but just to make it stick a little bit better, I am going to wet the brush. Yeah, this makes me feel like it's gonna be more secure. I don't know why. It still looks good without it, but it does look it does look better wet, of course. Now, of course, when I close my eyes like this and look normal at myself, uh, it's going to crease and transfer up eventually. Fair warning, all of my eyeshadows do it. All right, so for the outer corner of the eye, I'm going to take the color of a legendary right here, and we're gonna put it on the outer corner using the same brush. 
Oh, sheesh. Good grief. It like dove into that one. See that? It like went in. The color of legendary appears to be softer in the pan uh, than the last shimmer of beet was. It's not a bad thing, but it definitely picked up more on the brush than the last color did. Looks very pretty though. All right, so this is our top um, eyeshadow. Let's move on to the bottom now. I don't know which brush I'm gonna use. Okay, so I'm gonna take the BH V16 brush and the e.l.f. underlining brush and we're gonna pick two colors um, for both eyes. We're gonna do different colors underneath. Now I'm going to do the color of Campy because yellow eyeshadow is my life. And the one problem I have with yellow eyeshadows is, well there's two problems. One, they're not always very pigmented and two, they fade away very fast because they're a light color. So we're gonna see if this is one of the good yellows that stay and stay bright throughout the day. So I'm gonna take the color of Campy on the e.l.f. underlining brush and we're just gonna pack it all underneath the lower lash line except for the very outer corner. All right, so the yellow under here looks very pretty so far. Of course, it's not gonna be as bright as it would be on the top lid because I put a white base down on the top. But under here, it looks very yellow. I don't know if you can even see, like, it looks yellow. For the outer corner of the lower lash line, I am going to add the color of oh, hmm. let's add the color of fishy whoa <laughs> that one is pigmented i'm gonna blend it into the yellow to make kind of like because it appears to be blending very well so the blue and the yellow are together are making green in the middle and i am perfectly okay with something that transitions itself and I don't even have to grab another color. Look, can you even see? Like, it's blue to green to yellow. And there's not even like a green in this palette really. That's pretty cool. It looks nice and like rainbowy and I didn't have to add a green. That's cool. All right, for the next um, brush, we're gonna take the color of Kiki, which is this really pretty color. Now I heard in Manny's video and in Raw Beauty Christie's video, which I watched some of, that this color is not supposed to be super, super pigmented. I don't thoroughly believe that it's supposed to be like that if it is not pigmented. Just because, like, it's a matte like the rest of them, I don't want to hear that, you know, it, it doesn't work properly. Um, but it picked up a lot on the brush, so maybe it is pigmented. I'm not a fan of this one so far, I'm just gonna say, I know he said that it's not the most pigmented thing in the world. But then it shouldn't be in the palette, I guess. I don't know, not a fan of it. It's doing stuff under here. It's not my favorite, so I am going to try to remove it a little bit with my finger and see if we can restart the lower lash line. I'm not a fan of it. I don't know why it's a matte, not pigmented color. I don't care if it's supposed to be like a tougher or something. It, it doesn't go with any of the rest of the colors to be a topper for it, so I don't understand. Um, doesn't mean the palette's not good overall. Just one shadow that I'm not crazy about. Okay, so I think I removed a lot of it. Let's move on now and put the color of Kai Kai, the bright pink, underneath my lower lash line. That's pretty. That one looks really pretty. I like that pink color. All right, so the next color I'm gonna use is Pageant Queen. I'm gonna use the purple uh, in the outer corner of this lower lash line. And she is very pigmented too, wow. The pink and the purple blended seamlessly together. Like, psh, butter. They blended so beautifully together, wow. Now, got a little bit of mismatchness going on. I'm going to add mascara and lashes, finish up my face, and I will be back in an hour so we have a little bit of a wear test. All right, guys, I am back. I have did my makeup and I waited an hour just to do a little bit of a wear test. The shimmers have not transferred as far as I thought they would. They're still transferred up, of course, because 
you know the bottom eye colors look good the yellow is holding in there strong the green that mixed with the blue um looks really really pretty the pink and purple is so impressive it looks stunning under there i did these little stars i thought it'd be cute i don't know if it is or not you guys can let me know i'm just really happy with the way the eyeshadow looks the top is very pretty when i wet the brush it got so much prettier on the shimmers the mattes blended out beautifully i think my favorite of like the neutral side of the palette is the color of trade just thought it was really nice blended seamlessly i really like the yellow the colors um the shimmers are here very good i did not like the color kiki uh, you know you could build it up if you wanted to. It does have some pigment. It's just not like an impressive shadow to me. The rest of them though that I tried are very good. I'm not a fan of black eyeshadow, so I probably won't use this one. But it is great for deepening looks if you want to. The color of Fishy, which was like the different kind of formula, was very pretty, very pigmented. The colors look good. I will be doing more tutorials using this palette on my Instagram. If you want to check that out, it is at Porcelain Cosmetics. So I'll have a bunch of mini tutorials using this palette up there, as well as some pictures up there using it. Because I'm really going to try to get my money out of this palette. It blends well. I know some people, when they saw this palette, kept comparing it to other things. Personally, I don't think it looks like anything else. Maybe the cover reminds me of like the Kat Von D Divine palette, but that's kind of like a coincidence. I just, I don't know, because it looks like half neutral, half color. I don't see myself comparing it to any other palettes. I like the colors. The yellow just calls my name. I'm glad the yellow is good. I will, at the end, end, end of this video, when I say goodbye and stuff, I will insert like a clip of like a long wear test of this shadow. So we'll see how long it lasts. Maybe six or seven hours from now. We'll see. Anyways, I'm going to insert some swatches now so we can see what it looks like on a pale and darker skin tone. All right, here are these swatches on two different skin tones. It's kind of hard to see side by side, so we'll talk about mine first. They look pretty good on mine. I'm not a fan of the mint color. I just think it looks kind of chalky. The rest of them look pretty good. I really like the shimmers. And on his skin tone, these first three look pretty ashy on him. Uh, not a fan. The shimmers do look good. This gold looks stunning. Purple looks good as well on his skin tone. The yellow, you're going to put down a base if you want to put it on this kind of skin tone. Because it's going to come off kind of dark. Um, the mint color just kind of chalky, but the rest of the colors look very pretty. What do you think, Daniel? I like them. You do like them? I like this one. Mm-hmm. And like, I like how this one looks on you. Yeah, the, the shimmers look pretty. Alright guys, what did you think of these swatches? Obviously some are better than others, but overall like the swatches look pretty good. A swatch on the finger is not like a true test of a quality of a shadow, but it is like a pretty good like, what's it gonna look like on me kind of thing. For when I said this palette is big, it is big. It is the same width as a Anastasia palette, so like the Modern Renaissance here, which everyone knows of. It's the same thickness, so it does have some thickness to it. It's a little bit heavier, obviously. And as far as how big it is, compared to an Anastasia palette, it's huge, right? It's like really, really big. But I don't think that's like a bad thing. You get a lot of product in here. I don't see too much wasted space other than like maybe the bottom, but that's where the brush goes. And you get a mirror up top, the mirror was very good. I go, I don't know, I like the palette. I know I titled this video a review, but it's kind of like a first impressions. For me, I do think it's worth the price. I bought a lot more palettes that did not do well for this price tag, and this is doing very well for me. If you want more tutorials on my YouTube channel using this palette, let me know. I will be posting more on my Instagram later this week. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more from me, I put a video every single freaking day, and I will see you guys later. Bye!